Thank the speaker. Thank my friend from Texas. Uh, a lot of conservatives believe in conservation. For example, the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, who's expanded the Everglades more than any governor in the history of the state, because that's actual conservation, instead of the nonsense being spewed by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. And when they say, oh, we do something, let's just be clear to the American people what doing something actually is. It's giving billions of dollars of subsidies to your fat cat corporate cronies, enriching them at the expense of hardworking American families. That's the truth. 90% of subsidies going to billion dollar corporations. 80% of electronic vehicle subsidies going to people making over well over $100,000. That's the actual truth of what's going on. Here today, we're talking about two bills to deal with, or several bills, but we're dealing with the fentanyl crisis, which my colleagues on the other side of the aisle refuse to address by allowing our border to be wide open, exploited by cartels, driving fentanyl into our communities on the back of the Chinese making money doing so, killing 72,000 Americans last year alone, including five children in Hayes County, where I live, south of Austin. It's happening every single day. But my colleagues don't care about securing the border. They want to hide behind the fact that they say that fentanyl comes through ports of entry. But what they don't acknowledge is that there is no patrolling of the border by Border Patrol because they're all processing human beings being smuggled here for profit by dangerous cartels. This bill is designed to take a step forward, and it takes an important step forward of ensuring that we're dealing with the fentanyl precursors and that we're doing what we need to do to recognize how deadly it is. But the fact is our colleagues don't want to actually secure the border, which is where fentanyl pours across every single day. And on student loans, Need we go any further than looking at the quotes from Speaker Pelosi when she said, people think the President of the United States has the power for debt forgiveness. He does not. He can postpone. He can delay. But he does not have that power. That has to be an act of Congress. That was that grand MAGA extremist, Nancy Pelosi. She also added, uh, suppose your child just decided they at this time do not want to go to college, but you're paying taxes to forgive somebody else's obligation, she continued. You may not be happy about that. Are American families supposed to be happy that they now must cover the cost of someone else's education? Again, that great MAGA extremist, Nancy Pelosi. The fact is, the American people understand that making the other Americans, plumbers, people who have paid off their loans, pay off other people's student loans is inherently un-American and inherently unfair. And one last message to my Republican colleagues. Passing a CRA to die in the Senate and die at the President's desk is not enough. We should defund the student loan fiasco in the debt ceiling bill. Don't blink. I yield back.